The U.S. and NATO have formally rejected Moscow's sweeping security demands, refusing, among other things, to rule out future NATO membership for Ukraine. In its written reply to Moscow's proposals, Washington offers what it calls a serious diplomatic path out of the crisis. In recent weeks, Russia has massed some 100,000 troops near its border with Ukraine, stirring fears of an attack. DW's Terry Schultz has been covering this story from the beginning and joins us now from Brussels. Terry, the U.S. and NATO have now delivered written responses to Russia's security demands. What's their message? The message, Terry, is what we've been hearing now for weeks, that it is very important for Moscow to understand that the U.S. and NATO want to continue the diplomatic dialogue, but that some of these demands are simply not acceptable, the, the large one being, of course, that NATO would agree not to expand to other countries, notably Ukraine at this point. So this is not coming as a surprise to Moscow. What's in these letters, which I might point out remain classified at this point, but which we heard about uh, in, in press briefings last night. Um, but at the same time, both the U.S. and NATO are willing to talk about other issues that are important to Moscow, um, nuclear policy, uh, arms control, possibly even a reduction in military exercises if Moscow would agree to the same. So there are points that the U.S. and NATO would like to see Russia engage on, but uh, they simply had to put this in writing as the Kremlin requested to show that they were willing to continue the diplomatic path and very much hope that Moscow will do the same. Meanwhile, Terry, uh, Russia has been carrying out military maneuvers, not just on Ukraine's borders, but elsewhere as well. Ukraine is not the only country feeling threatened, is it? That's right. Uh, after 2014, um, there was this big shock that Russia would actually cross internationally recognized borders and, and seize territory um, that, that belonged to another sovereign nation. So now with this huge buildup and the fact that no one can say exactly what's in Vladimir Putin's mind, there are other countries worried about their territory in the Baltic Sea in particular. Um, and Sweden has this beautiful island of Gotland that's situated right right off Kaliningrad, so not far from, from Russian territory, and from where you could, if you wanted to, if you seized this island, block uh, both air and naval access to the Baltic allies of Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, as well as to Finland, which is not a NATO ally. So I went to Gotland to see for myself just how vulnerable it seems. In normal times, the only large groups of foreigners coming to Gotland are the one million tourists who flock to the Swedish island every year. But now the Swedish government is preparing for the possibility of unwelcome visitors, as Russian President Vladimir Putin's military maneuvers spread concern far beyond Ukraine. We cannot exclude an armed attack against Sweden. And uh, what we want to do just now is to be very clear that we are ready to defend Sweden. And because of that, we also are doing what we are doing now on the island of Gotland. Gotland is a geostrategic prize jewel in the Baltic Sea, essential for NATO's access to its Baltic allies and its Swedish and Finnish partners. From this island, you can uh, control both the air and seaways in the region. Gotland was a key military asset for Sweden for centuries, until 2005, when the Swedish government assessed post-Cold War tensions as so low that it disbanded all the permanent military units here, in what turned out to be just wishful thinking. That's why the Swedish government has been rearming the island since shortly after Russia's seizure of Ukraine's Crimea region and has intensified it in recent weeks. That Gotland could be next in the Kremlin's sights is no longer unthinkable for Swedes watching the Russian government continue to escalate. A bit like a game of chicken where, where one of the drivers, Russia in this case, has just thrown the, the steering wheel out the window. So we're heading, to, unfortunately, to some kind of, of crash in my view. Defense Minister Hultqvist believes the country has enough friends to feel safe, even without being a member of NATO. We have deep cooperation with the United States. We have UK as a very close partner. We are a NATO partnership. We have a Nordic solidarity doctrine, and we also have a solidarity doctrine in the European Union. But being a partner to NATO doesn't provide the guarantee of mutual defense that allies get and which Paul Jonsson, head of the Swedish Parliament's Defense Committee, feels his country needs. We can hope, we can assume, we can wish that we get uh, support from NATO, but we cannot know until we join the alliance. 
A recent poll shows an increasing number of Swedes support NATO membership, but that still only amounts to about a third of the population, for now anyway. If something very serious would happen in this part of the world, that Mr. Putin decides on something in, in the Baltic region here, I think we would apply very quickly. But then the question would be whether NATO would accept a country already in dire straits, especially if Gotland were gone. Is there a real fear, Terry, that Gotland could see a Russian invasion? I don't think the Swedish government is scaremongering by any stretch. What they say consistently is simply that they can't rule it out. And this is what you hear from analysts, both on and off the record, that no one knows what Russian President Vladimir Putin is going to do. They can only measure what he's capable of doing, and he's capable of doing a lot. And as you saw in my piece, uh, Russia has sent uh, naval ships into the Baltic Sea, just sailing by there, just keeping an eye on things. And that's strikes fear or at least concern in the hearts of many. So what the Swedish government is doing is just getting ready, just in case, they say. Terry, thank you so much. That was our reporter Terry Schultz in Brussels.